we do as Bible teachers and expositors of God's word is that we take principles based out of God's word and adapt it to a modern context. Can I get an amen? amen? Okay, number one, if you are married or single, young or old, widowed or divorced, you need to know this. You don't need to have a significant other to be significant. You got to let that sink in. Singleness is not a curse. Singleness is not a disease. Singleness is not a problem that the church has to fix. Your singleness doesn't make you less than. Marriage isn't the prize for you being better or more beautiful. Marriage is a gift from God, but marriage isn't the goal. You are complete in Jesus Christ, Colossians 2.10. And I know that it might be, maybe you're sitting here in the same way when I was single and I would hear people talk about this, like, wait for the one, I kissed Jaden goodbye. And I'm like, yeah, because you're married. But I wasn't always married. And I didn't get married until later on in life. And there's this sadness that sweeps over men and women when seeing everyone's life change except your own. You go through these shifts, like college graduations turn into wedding announcements, and then that turns into wedding invitations, and then that turns into baby party invitations, and you're still there, single and alone, eating appetizers and hors d'oeuvres in the corner, wondering why everyone keeps on asking you why you're still single, begging God for the hour to go by so you can get in your car and cry. I begged God, never let me forget this pain. Because the church is comprised of 60% singles, and we've relegated them to like, well, one day when your boo comes, then your life is going to be complete. It's, it's not. It's really not. It's awesome, and it's great, and it's hard work, but the prize isn't marriage. The prize is you stepping into who God has called you to be in this season. And so my word for the singles in the house is maximize this single season of singleness. You know what, I realized, I was just like, okay, statistically speaking, again, I'm a data nerd, okay? Statistically speaking, I quite possibly am not going to get married. The more educated a female is and the older she is, the less likely she is to get married. I realized, I said, you know what, I'm not going to wait until there's a ring on my finger to, like, live my life. I said, I'm going to travel. So I traveled the globe alone. I went to graduate school and graduated top of my class in graduate school. I did something that I wouldn't have been able to do if I was married. I served in youth ministry for eight long years and I gave them everything. The beautiful thing about that is you don't know the seeds that you harvest in different seasons because here in this house there are kids that are now adults that are part of TFHOC from the youth group that I served in. Maximize your, single, your season of singleness. And Paul speaks to this really quick, uh, beautifully. He tells people in, 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 in 1 Corinthians 7, 8, Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it's good for them to stay unmarried, as I do. So in this season, don't focus on what's next. Focus on what's now. And how are you going to maximize that? Point number two, don't pursue a relationship unless you are in a place to pursue a healthy and maintain a healthy relationship. So let's say that you're in med school or you're in law school, you're in grad school, and your focus is to graduate and do well. Hey, it might not be the season for you to try to invest or start something new. Now, if you're currently in a relationship, that's something different. If you are coming out of uh, drug abuse or alcohol addiction or some sort of addiction, hey, it's probably not the season for you to engage in a relationship. If you uh, can't be responsible to pay your bills on time, you can't wash your laundry, you don't clean your car, and you survive off of Flaming Hot Cheetos, you're probably not ready to get married. Yeah, but I want someone to help take care of me. You're looking for a mom, not a wife, okay? It's time we gotta grow up. That's lovely. I don't know why y'all, ooh, ooh. You know it's all the things that you're thinking, right? Okay, Look, point number three, be reasonable with your expectations. We, we have to be honest about this because I talk to girls and here's the thing, they're like, I'm single and I'm waiting and all of a sudden, a brother who might as well be Jesus comes up and introduces himself and then I hear things like, mm, well, he has facial hair, I'm just not too sure. It's like, are you kidding me? You have a great option, what's your problem? The other, you know, the other side of that is, I meet men and women and I'm like, well, why are you in this relationship? It's not healthy, it's not good. And, and it boils down to the fact like, well, they asked me out. We, our standards can't be so high that they're unattainable and yet so low that like we don't put any value on us. 
on a, a loving word to the men of the house, I'm, I hear men and I wonder, what planet are you on? You know, like, yeah, like, I want a dime piece, I want a 10, an LA face with the Oakland booty, boom, boom. No, 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 and I'm sitting here thinking, you want a 10, but brother, you're a two. Like, let's, <laughs> let's have some conversation. What does it look like? What does it look like to have honest conversations? It's the truth, y'all. It's the truth. What does it look like to have honest conversations with those in our community? I had conversations. My best friend is on the front row, and we had this conversation where we rated our spirituality. On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give me? On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give my emotional stability? On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give my physical maintenance of working out and health and that sort of stuff? You know what they gave me for my emotional stability? <laughs> You wish you knew. Okay, I just prayed for them. I just prayed for them. They gave me a two, y'all, a two. So I went to Jesus about it, I prayed and I fasted and then I got married. So like, bless Matt's heart, he had to deal with it. Point number four, a date is not dating. It's just a coffee date, not a marriage proposal, all right? We put so much on this. I remember Brianna sitting on the front row when, when Matt asked me out to coffee, I freaked out. I was texting her, blowing up her phone. I called her and I was like, oh my gosh, this guy from Orange County is like asking me out to coffee. She's like, it's coffee, you're 28. Like do something about it, you know? <laughs> so what does it look like if we just take the pressure off of a date? Dating, or a date is not dating. And here's the thing, with a date, you're gonna go out with someone, you're gonna keep the date under 90 minutes. If you invite them, you pay for it. You end the night with an A-frame hug, not a full hug, an A-frame hug, and you keep it PG. And here's the thing, you might be sitting here thinking like, it's so Victorian, that's so old school, you legalist. It's actually not. Research coming out of Boston College is talking about how this generation, my generation, the next generation after that, do not know how to date. And we have dates synonymous with sex, and we're ruining relationships. People are getting it wrong. That's secular data coming out of Boston College. Now, a little tidbit, if you take, if you invite someone on a date, don't take them to a club, don't take them to a movie, don't take them to a concert, because you want to have a conversation. You want to get to know them. You want to get to know their name. Amen? Yes, in addition to that, if you are really interested in someone, don't take them to a place where there's a walk-up counter and you eat your di dinner with a spork, okay? You're gonna wanna have like a real napkin and a great meal. In addition to that, think about when you ask a person out, do the most, do the most. Like iron your shirt, use a breath mint, have two eyebrows, like put intention <laughs> into dating. I was like, it's this haphazard thing, like, hey, yo, you want to go get coffee? No, do the most. Do the most because this is probably the best that it's going to get. And we have to have courage. You could ask someone out, but here's the thing. Be willing to accept the response because it's okay if someone doesn't like you. Thank them. Don't be all up in your feelings and go to the prayer team and be like, hey, there's a wolf in sheep clothing just totally took advantage of me. Like, I thought he was flirting with me. No, just stop. We've made dating so weird in church. It's weird because you're weird. Just be normal. <laughs> Number five, do not date anyone who's not a Christian. If they don't love Jesus or have a relationship with God that's on par with yours, this will be unhealthy. And I talk to men and women, they're like, yeah, but they're spiritual. I, it, it doesn't matter. Scripture tells us that even demons believed in Jesus. And I don't want you to date a demon. You're welcome. Second Corinthians 6, 4 says, do not be unequally yoked. And I joke like, hey, he's single, you're single, he's hot, like flirt to convert. That's a joke. I just want to clarify, I'm not serious. Because if you flirt to convert, the joke's on you when they don't expect uh, they don't accept your state of belief. Six, this is me, this is personal, okay? Don't, if you're dating someone, don't date multiple people. Okay, because this is where it gets confusing. Like, I know if there's not a ring and it's not official, then you're kind of like still in the market, but it's confusing to the other person. If you're dating, not if you go on a date, but if you're dating, which is multiple dates leading to a serious relationship, don't date multiple people, amen? And the reason why and this is again statistical data, is because it's confusing with multiple options. 
And it's almost as if people are trying to Frankenstein relationships. Like, I like his eyes, and I, I like their bank account, and I like their level of education. And you're waiting for, like, this magical, mythical unicorn chupacabra to come out with glitter and, and leprechauns all like, I'm the one. And it's not going to happen. Which is point number seven. Look at who God puts in front of you. Ruth was in the field when Boaz saw her. And I think that we kind of like turn a blind eye to the people who are absolutely in front of us. So pay attention to the people who are in front of you. Who are you overlooking that might be the amazing person that God has for you? And my fear in, in, in church community specifically is there's a lot of great men and women who are being overlooked. Single parents, divorcees, older men or older women. Who is God putting in front of you? And pay attention. Maybe there's someone who's a little shy or quiet. What does it look like to ask them out? And I firmly believe that here at TFHOC, we are going to be a house that redefines dating in a Christian context. I believe that we will be healthy enough so that we could date someone and if the relationship terminates and it ends, that it ends well because we're brothers and sisters in Christ. I believe that there can be great purity in relationships and health in relationships. I believe there's redeeming relationships where divorces come back together and people who are in fractured relationships come together. And dare I say at the end of this relationship series, I believe that some people who are in unhealthy, toxic relationships will end those. Number eight, use technology wisely. Internet dating is not a sin. I know it's taboo in some circles. You all can play. It's fine. We're just going to be real spiritual real quick as we wrap this up. Um, uh, internet dating is not a sin. And I feel like uh, we need to start addressing this openly and publicly because 37% uh, of people in this room, mostly single, are using dating apps. And the problem that I see is that if we don't provide context around it and wisdom around it, then we're left to do it in secrecy. Like, oh, I don't want anyone to know that I'm on, you know, Tinder or I'm on Match or Christian Mingle, which is like the worst one ever. Okay, don't do Christian Mingle. And, 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 we, and we, we were silent about it. But what happens is that secrecy is, is bred in, it, sin is bred in secrecy. So what does it look like to go to your community and be like, hey, I'm stepping into this. Will you keep me accountable? Can you make sure I don't date the de Craigslist killer and end up dead in a ditch? You know, and then also your community can be honest about who you're portraying online so you don't look like a different version of who actually shows up. Number nine before 10 is only invest in relationships to someone that you are attracted to. And this attraction is on three fronts, physically attracted, emotionally attracted and mentally thank you praise clearly mentally attracted all right because here's the thing if you're the type of person you're like i just love to read i read 10 books a month this is so exciting and then you're dating someone who only reads books with pictures it might be like a bad fit you know if you are someone who you are like looking for someone of great deep uh, emotional maturity and emotional balance and then you marry a crazy mexican it's probably not a good fit so what does it look like to do an honest assessment am i attracted to them mentally am i attracted to them emotionally am i attracted to them spiritually and then move forward and lastly guard your heart we give our heart away so quickly over stupid and significant things and it's a hookup culture and a sleep culture and a netflix and chill no because when you netflix and chill leads to children okay you gotta be careful about that yes write that down don't forget it we are gonna ask god to do transforming works in our life in this house and for those that call tfhoc their home we hope that god does something here that marks you, that your name becomes etched in stone for the man and the woman that God has called you to be.